Hello Year 10 and welcome to today's lesson. Once again we're carrying along with our theme of algebra and today once again we'll be looking at completing the square, this time adding an extra element to those expressions that we start with. If you haven't yet watched yesterday's video I encourage you to go back and do that one because that's going to help you develop the skills you'll need in today's lesson. At points you will um, need to make notes so you'll need your maths book and you may also want to have a whiteboard with you as well. Okay, to start the lesson, can you go ahead and pause this video and have a go at the do now questions? Welcome back. Okay, for question one, I do want to go over question one and two because they're going to help us with today's lesson and they're exactly what we did yesterday. So when we're writing in the completed square form, that means we're writing it as x plus a number squared and then subtract another number. Okay, and we're going to continue looking at that form today, but the expressions we start with will be a little bit more complex. To turn this format here into the completed square format, we start by halving this number and putting that in the bracket with the x and squaring it. We then take this number here and square it, which gives me 9, and we subtract that. The great thing about completing the square is you can check if you've done it right by expanding this back out. If I expand this back out, well firstly I need to write the brackets out twice because they're squared and I've still got that subtract 9 on the end. When I expand these two sets of brackets I get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 and I've still got subtract 9 on the end. Plus 9 and minus 9 cancel each other out and this part here combines to 6x so I'm left with x squared plus 6x. For question 2 it's very similar. This time we have a different number, or half of 8 is 4, but the thing you need to note is that actually it's half of negative 8, so it's going to be negative 4. In my brackets, I put negative 4 with that x and square it. I then subtract this number squared. Negative 4 times negative 4 is going to give me positive 16, so I'm subtracting that number there. If you had a go at question 3, you'll want to go back, and I believe it's lesson 4, and check if you struggled on that one. And for question four, you would have done this in school. You would have needed to recognise that this is a trigonometry uh, question and started by labelling the sides. The angle is opposite the opposite side. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle and it's the longest side. And the last one is the adjacent. I have the hypotenuse and I'm looking for the opposite. So the equation I'm going to be using is sine of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Substituting in, I get sine of 30, because this x here, some of you may have seen it as theta, that always represents the angle. And that is equal to the opposite, which is x, because I don't know what it is, over 10. Rearranging this, I get 10 sine 30 equals x. And using your calculator, or some of you may know what sine 30 is off the top of your heads, you will have found that x is equal to 5 centimetres. Okay, can you go ahead and pause this video and write down today's date and title? You do not need to write down the keywords as we wrote them down yesterday. Okay, so to start today's lesson, I just want to look at how we go from this format here and back into this format over here. Now you'll notice that this one is slightly different to what we looked at yesterday. Yesterday, this number here was always the square of this one. However, today it's not. The reason is, you'll have noticed on the right-hand side, we have an extra term, and that impacts on what number we get at the end of the completed square form. Now, if I expand this, I get x plus 4, x plus 4, and then subtract 4. Expanding these two brackets will give me x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16, and then I've got that subtract 4 on the end. Combining like terms, I get x squared plus 8x plus 12. So you'll notice this is in fact correct. It does give me the original equation up here. But the question is, why is this number not subtract 16? And how did we get negative 4? Well, the trick is to first complete the square on this first section here, which gives me x plus 4 squared. That's what we looked at yesterday. You guys are quite happy with writing this in the completed square form. This will be x plus 4 squared, and then I would have to subtract 16. 
Well, this time I have an extra plus 12. This section here will give me x squared plus 8x, but I need to make sure I've got this 12 in there as well. So I now add on the 12. What I can do is simplify this by combining these two like terms, which gives me x plus 4 squared, negative 16 plus 12 will give me negative 4. So it's very much the same as yesterday where we complete the square on the first section and then just make sure we add on anything extra we have. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you an example now. We start still with the same as step one from yesterday. So step one was to half the coefficient of x, which will give me three. Step two is right into the bracket. which is x with that number squared. Step three is to subtract step one squared. So I've still got my brackets, and this time I'm subtracting this number, the number I got in step one squared. Well, three squared is nine. And step four is to add the last term. And by that, I mean the last term in the expression we started with. So finally, I need to add the 5. And then we want to combine like terms. Negative 9 plus 5 is going to give me subtract 4. So the first three steps are exactly what we did yesterday. Step 4, we just have to make sure we can include this section here in my completed square form and that's why this number here is not just simply the square of this number. Can you please pause the video and write this down as an example? And then have a go at the one on the right on your own. Okay, so for step one and also step two, I've combined them here. I took half the coefficient of x and wrote it into the brackets and squared it. And then subtracted that number squared. So I took five and squared it, which gave me 25, and then subtracted that. For step four, which is these two steps here, I've then added the last term, and then I've actually combined those two like terms. to Give me x plus five all squared minus 16. Okay, what happens though if it's negative to start with? Well, let's have a look. We've also got a negative number on the end this time. Well, I'm still going to do the same as step one, which is the half of the coefficient of x. Well, half of negative 20 is going to be negative 10. Step two, I'm going to write it into the brackets. Step three, I'm going to square this number and subtract it from everything. So I've still got those brackets. Negative 10 squared is going to be positive 100. And then I want to subtract that number. So I'm going to subtract 100. And step four is to add. I say add, it may in fact be subtract, but I basically want to combine this number into the equation. Minus 100, this is negative 11, so it's going to be negative. Combining like terms gives me x minus 10 squared minus 111. Please pause the video and write this down as an example. And have a go at the one on the right on your own. There is the answer. Okay, what happens though, if when we halve this number it doesn't come out very nice? That's okay, let's have a look together. Step one is still to half it. Remember yesterday, 
when we halved an odd number, I didn't write it as a decimal, I chose to write it as a fraction just because it's a little bit easier to work with. So half that number is going to be three over two. Then I'm going to write that into the brackets. Then I want to subtract that number squared. Well, three over two squared, we can do some workings out over here. It's going to be three squared over two squared, which is equal to nine over four. And then step four, I need to combine this end number in there as well. I would not leave it like this. I want to give this as a singular fraction at the end um, because this is not fully simplified yet. So I'm going to do some more workings out down here. So I've got negative 9 over 4, and then I want to change 2 into a fraction. Well, 2, negative 2 can be written as negative 2 over 1. So I've now got these two to combine. However, I cannot add and subtract any sort of fractions until the denominators are the same. So what I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by 4 to find an equivalent fraction, which gives me negative 8 over 4. So now I have negative 8 over 4. And combining these, negative 9 and negative 8 will give me negative 17, and that's over 4. So my final answer is x plus 3 over 2 all squared minus 17 over 4. If you're not sure on how I've combined those, I suggest you have a look on Hegarty and remind yourself of how we add and subtract fractions. Please pause the video and write this down as an example. I encourage you to write these two sections of workings in boxes so it's clear that it's additional workings to the main process. And have a go at the one on the right on your own. And there's your final answer. Okay, I want you to pause the video here and have a go at these questions. When you get to question two, give it a go. It's a little bit of an extension. You want to think about, is there an alternative way to write this to make it look like something that you know how to solve? Okay, and there are your answers. And I would like to discuss question two with you. Some of you will have given this a go, so well done. If you weren't sure, it's still worth watching. It's quite a challenging question. It's one that's going to get you extra marks in an exam. So I would look at this and say, well, I don't know how to write this in completed the square form because I'm used to the x squared being positive. I'm used to it being at the beginning of my expression. So how can I force this to be positive? Well, what I'm going to do is rewrite the expression with the three at the start. That's absolutely fine. I don't mind that three, that's okay. And then these two terms here, I'm going to force them to be positive by factorizing out negative one. Factorizing out negative one of this term here leaves this as just positive 10x. And factorizing out negative one here leaves me with positive x squared. So what I'm left with is 3 minus 10x plus x squared. Because 3 minus 10x will create this term, and then minus x squared will create this term. Well, now that I've got this, I know how to complete the square on this part, and then I've just got to combine it with this section over here. So over on the right, 
I'm going to reorder it, x squared plus 10x, because that's what we're used to seeing. And I'm going to complete the square on that part. This will give me x plus 5, because I want half the coefficient of x, all squared, and then subtract 25. Now that I've completed the square on this section, I'm going to write it in over here, and I'm actually going to include some even bigger brackets here. I've got 3, subtract, and I'm going to use square brackets, because I've also got um, curved brackets over here. And now I'm going to write all of this into here. What I now want to do is uh, continue sort of uh, expanding ever so slightly and rearranging this to make it look into this format. This in an exam, if you got to this stage, would give you some fantastic marks. However, it's not going to give you them all. What I now need to realise is I've got 3 minus this entire bracket. So I'm still going to have 3 take away x plus 5 squared. So I've combined this negative with this term here. Then I've also got subtract negative 25. Well, if I subtract a negative number, that's just going to become positive, which gives me positive 28, sorry, 25. Now combining like terms, well, I've got 3 and 25 over here. I apologise, you can't read that very well which gives me 28 minus x plus 5 squared. That is an extra challenging question. If you want to have a look at more questions like that, I recommend you go on to Hegarty and have a look at some of the quizzes. OK, we've made it to the end of the lesson. Please make sure you upload a photo of your work and also complete today's quiz on frog. And I will see you in our lesson tomorrow.